Welcome to RTV News. I am Isabel Masozera. This is what we have coming up for you. Rwanda is currently hosting the 47th Parliamentary Assembly of Francophonie countries and more than 300 delegates are attending from different parts of the world. Also, 28 years after Rwanda's liberation, agricultural experts and professional farmers are commending the progress the country has made when it comes to food security. And on Tuesday, the Chief of Defence Staff of Ghana, Vice Admiral Seth Amoama, who is on an official visit in Rwanda, visited various historical sites that show the history of Rwanda. Thanks for choosing RTV. I am Isabel Masozera. Getting on to our top story. Now, Rwanda is currently hosting the 47th Parliamentary Assembly of the Francophonie countries, and more than 300 delegates are attending from different parts of the world under the theme Global Governance, the Role of Parliament in Building Lasting Peace. The meeting of the APF General Assembly is slated for Saturday this week, and the Francophonie Secretary General, Madame Madame Luis Moshikiwabo is expected to deliver a speech to the participants. However, the meetings are to take place in the preceding days. Now, usually a meeting of the General Assembly of the Francophonie Parliament takes place once a year, but it has been two years since the last one due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, while speaking at a press conference on Tuesday, the Speaker of the Rwandan Parliament pointed out that the Rwanda will have a lot to share during this conference. <laughs> I want to remind you that this is not the first time Rwanda is hosting such events. In 2012 and 2021, we hosted a meeting for speakers of parliaments in Africa. We are happy about having this meeting. It is important to Rwanda. It is a good platform to share ideas and everyone can learn something from each other. Rwanda will also share about its resilience and post-1994 genocide against the Tutsi journey. That session will take place during the General Assembly, but also in the Youth Forum, Rwanda will emphasize the need to bring youth on board in planning the future. During the Women's Forum, we will share its achievements on matters of gender equality and supporting women's empowerment. Rwanda will also have a role in the Commission. Uh, uh, all right, now moving on, businessmen and women in Yamashete district commended the efforts put in business facilitation in the past 28 years. Now, as they remember how difficult it used to be, we bring you details courtesy of Precious Kirezi. Entrepreneurs that conducted their business in Yamashetia within the last 28 years look back on the different challenges they encountered. Transportation was challenging due to poorly structured roads and caused accidents in some instances, especially in the Kivu Belt area. When going to a wholesaler, we had to use large cargo vehicles due to the poor road networks. Musabjima Na Andre owns a two-story building with 40 rooms located at Chazo Center in the heart of Nyamashetye. The sense of security the government has provided us with is what prompted me to act to modernize this trading center. And being a pioneer is profitable. Namba Dijimana Emmanuel owns a modern clothing store. Finding a store like this here, depending on if you need to buy a shirt or dress, required you to find it in Kamembe or Kigali, which goes to show that the impossible has become possible. Interaction with wholesalers has been made easy with the use of technology and the clientele has increased due to road penetration. Houses and malls have sprung up all over the place, which the district claims they plan to keep afloat. The vice mayor in charge of economic affairs urges businessmen and women to re-establish the commercial space in this area. Nyamasheche is on the shores of Lake Chivu and there are many investment opportunities that I encourage entrepreneurs to partake in. 
Very short amari, chani chani janyo mchira rujendo. Yamashete isn't an area that has conducted successful businesses in the past, but a number of its residents have been earning their keep as of recent, which road reparations have played a role in. While entrepreneurs are happy with these changes, they need to access the connecting roads to rural areas to ensure there are no hindrances to production. Precious Tedezi, RTV News. Thank you, Precious. Now, after 28 years after Rwanda's liberation, agriculture experts and professionals who are farmers are commending the progress that the country has made when it comes to food security. Though they are stressing that there needs to be more food processing and markets for finished products. Still, during the 2020-2021 fiscal year, Rwanda's agriculture sector registered revenues amounting to 445 billion Rwanda francs, about 25% increase to previous five years. We have the details. Food security is not an issue in Rwanda, thanks to government efforts to increase productivity in the agricultural sector. You simply have to make your rounds among farmers depending on the produce that you want. Certainly the season plays a factor as to which vegetables may be harder to find. But in most cases, they are always readily available. Food security as it seems, um, uh, since my stay here in, in, in uh, Rwanda, it seems to be quite adequate. Uh, we've not had any problems uh, with uh, the local crops being uh, supplied to us. So that's a very good thing. Uh, I want to be, uh, I want to be and say very appreciative to the government of Rwanda uh, who has uh, been very diligent in supplying the uh, small farmers with the necessary funding and technical assistance that they will need farmers with the necessary funding and technical assistance that they will need in order to produce bunker crops. 28 years after Rwanda was liberated, the agricultural sectors continue to be a vital pillar for the country's economy, accounting for as much as 26% of the gross domestic product. A lot of emphasis has been put on irrigation practices, with more than 66,000 hectares of farmland currently being irrigated. More than 762,000 hectares of farmland countrywide have been consolidated for higher productivity rates. The agricultural expert, Gerard Zirimgawagabo, once served as the Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture and More Resources, and he confirms that the progress the agricultural sector has made in the decades since is truly amazing. I remember when we first arrived in the ministry, the top priority was to repatriate and even we had to play a role in this. I was the 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 I also remember that once a week, the government officials would to the alongside farmers and that the water with them. Yeah, well, the the government was with them. If you were to come to the you would not be able to tell the officials or farmers apart. We were all telling them the now when I see local farmers asking Let's to hide machinery for more no and not planting seeds like the way things were then, I realize that the country was truly liberated. Indeed, young farmers like Eli Bjirinjiro have turned to greenhouse farming practices in the eastern province because of the returns and currently he earns close to half a million Rwandan francs every month with the objective of tripling that revenue within the next two years. Because of the current global increase in the cost of doing business, however, Ellie is worried. The challenge is that the cost of the things we need to practice farming has been increasing, yet food prices in local markets have remained largely unchanged, and that has us worried. Take fertilizers, for example. They are now scarce and expensive, not to mention sometimes late. When you have demand for your produce and start falling behind like that, you lose money. Current government officials in the Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Resources are not ignorant of the challenges farmers face despite the progress being made and have been using technology to help address them. 
cyane cyane ubyiruko kubishora mu mafaranga kubera kubera Apart from that we are encouraging the private sector especially the youth to invest in agriculture because of the opportunities that exist to establish virtual markets such websites link demand and supply you notice that during chogam such sites were utilized and there were no logistical problems when it comes to food supplies because it was easy to link the people with the produce to those that needed it here in Kigali and everybody remained informed. That is why we encourage young people to step in and take advantage of such networks and we are coordinating with things like NAYEB, the National Agricultural Export Development Board, to put up permanent sites with such information so that farmers can access it and they will soon be up and running. We will tell you how it will work and it will be a success. Figures from the ministry indicate that 88% of Rwanda's biggest farmers use planting seeds of the highest quality, while the figure is much lower among small farmers at just 33%. On average, as much as 60 kilograms of fertilizers are used per hectare of farmland. A very insightful report there. Now moving on, economists have pointed out that the government, the government's valuing the role of local communities in developmental initiatives is one of the factors that have boosted Rwanda's economy over the last 28 years. Precious Kirezi has this report. In 2003, Rwanda's economic growth was at just 2.2%, and by 2021, it registered 10.9%, despite the negative effects of the pandemic in 2020, resulting in it shrinking by 3.4%. Productivity saw an increase of 6% in the agricultural sector, industrial input was up by 13%, and the service sector was at a 12%. In 1995, the average Rwandan earned 232 US dollars a year and today income is over $800 while the country's gross domestic product has increased by more than 10 times in the last 20 plus years and maintained an average 8.6 percent. Those residing in the city of Kigali are pleased with how the passage of time all through the years has left tangible development in its wake therefore establishing a pattern of consistent economic development although there's still more to be worked on. Women in business were afraid to conduct their businesses abroad, who lived in the underlying fear that would get robbed or face any number of other problems, but we now walk in the confidence that women are the most influential business people they are, which we credit to our good leadership. In the years following the genocide against the Tutsi, close to 80% of Rwanda's national budget came from donors. During the current 2022-2023 fiscal year, the country is expected to use more than 4,658 trillion francs as its budget, an increase of 4% compared to the preceding fiscal year. 57% of that money will be internally generated, which just goes to show how the country's economy has progressed over the years. In the last 20 plus years, the national budget has increased 14 fold and revenue from within the country has increased by as much as 20 times over. ELK's Vice Chancellor Robert Rusiva, now who is an economist, is of the view that the government initiated programs aimed at improving various sectors like agriculture, service delivery, and finance have played a role in the development of Rwanda's economy over the last 28 years. <laughs> In the past, those who chose vocational studies ended up unemployed, but today the country has developed a vocational education system. Before the 1990s, it was difficult to access financial institutions, but the shared economy has made it accessible. After being severely affected by the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, Rwanda's industries resumed robust operations in 2021, increasing productivity rates by 16.5%, while agricultural productivity increased by 6.8%, and while the service sector rebounded by 11.1%. President Paul Kagame notes that the Vision 2020 helped shape Rwanda's economic development, having achieved its goals with an 85% success 
success rate, which is why he is confident that Vision 2050 will also be a success. <laughs> We are on the right track for economic development leading into the coming years. So what is required of Rwandans is that they continue to listen and work and to keep their children's education intact. Innovation and job creation. The government must continue to play its part. Build the necessary infrastructure where local residents can own their businesses and many other things that people can do to reach the markets that are in the country or abroad so that the economy grows. Due to the global economic crisis currently in play, the country's economy is projected to grow at a rate of 6% in 2022 compared to 10.9% in 2021. However, the measures taken ensure a growth rate of 6.7% in the next year 2023 and 7% in the years 2024 and 2025. Precious Chilezi, RTV News. Stay watching RTV News. Now on Tuesday, the Chief of Defense Staff of Ghana, the Vice Admiral Seth Amawama, who is on an official visit in Rwanda, visited various historical site, sites that show the history of Rwanda and also held discussions with the Chief of Defense Staff of Rwanda. Orivun Hede has more. In the morning, the Chief of Defense Staff of Ghana, Vice Admiral Seth Amawama, visited the Kigali Genocide Memorial as well as the Museum for Campaign Against Genocide, where he was briefed on the tragic history of Rwanda. While visiting the memorial, he paid tribute to the victims of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi buried there. In his message after the visit, he noted that, I had the honor of paying a visit to the memorial. As a leader of the delegation from Ghana Armed Forces, it has been a very insightful visit. One wonders how a whole generation, including children, would be wiped off through the genocide while the international community stood aloof. A great lesson never again to be witnessed in any part of the world. We thank God for the great transformation that has gone on in this country. God bless Rwanda and make it great. In the afternoon, the Chief of Defense Staff of Ghana, Vice Admiral Seth Amoama, was received by his counterpart, the Chief of Defense Staff of the RDF, General Jean Bosco Kazura, at the headquarters of the Ministry of Defense. The National Security Coordinator of Ghana, Major General Retired Francis Aduamafo, noted that the visit of the Ghanaian delegation to Rwanda aims at strengthening the relationship in military cooperation between the two countries. And uh, today we are paying a visit to the chief of the defense staff and his people to further, further discuss uh, security cooperation, intelligence cooperation. Oh, the discussion is simply to strengthen the relationship, security and intelligence relationship between our two countries. You know, in this era, in this uh, period, in these are contemporary times, you cannot do it alone. You need partnerships. And that is why we find our brothers in Rwanda as a good partner. And that is why we are here to further deepen the relationship that we started. The official visit of the Chief of Defense Staff of Ghana and his delegation is expected to last for seven days. Olive Nete, RTV News. I hope we earn the pleasure of your time on behalf of the entire news team here at RTV. Thank you so much for watching and keep it right here.